Hey everyone, this is David Gomez, and I am pleased to introduce uh, today Mario Ramirez, who is the managing director at Cambridge Wilkinson and Avalon, and also president at M. Ramirez Group. Mario, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you, David? Doing good. So uh, it's a pleasure to, to get to know you and have a, a conversation about you. Um, I know that we've been looking at our speakers and getting to know them a little better. So um, would you mind giving our audience um, a little bit about your background? Let us, let us know a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, so I'm from Dallas and, and, uh, and as you were asking me before we got started, I am a graduate of the University of Arkansas, uh, Walton College of Business. Um, my family is from, is, uh, is originally from Mexico. Um, my, my great, my great grandmother, Maria Luna, she's the, uh, she's known as the first Hispanic businesswoman in Dallas. She okay. came here in 1923. And, uh, you know, I live in Dallas now. She came here in 1923 and, uh, she started a, a, uh, a business of making, uh, uh, tortillas. And, um, she, in 1924, actually built the business, built the, the building, and um, it's actually still there today. It's the only remaining building uh, of Little Mexico, or Little Mexico Village, which what used to be called Little Mexico Village on the north side of downtown. Um, so it's, so she started this business. She had a very entrepreneurial spirit. Um, my family has always run the business. My dad, uh, so she came here with two, two kids, um, a son and a daughter. And the, the son had uh, several kids, seven kids, and they've all been involved in the business. My, the daughter turned out to be my grandmother, mm -hmm. and she had one son, my dad. He, they, were, they worked in the business as well, but he went to, to uh, he was the first one to go to college. He went to uh, Texas A&M. And then, um, you know, honestly, I don't think my great-grandmother really appreciated that she saw it more as you're getting away from work and my dad saw it as we need an education and right. it's going to lead to other opportunities and so um then he said i'm going to go to law school and uh you know so he became a lawyer and uh he actually started the the hispanic bar association here in dallas here in texas and um so that combination of entrepreneurial and the emphasis on education, um, you know, really is something that is, that is kind of at the core of who I am. And so I went to school at the University of Arkansas. Uh, I wanted to be a, an architect. And so I was in architecture the first year and I thought, no, I'm not gonna do this. I don't wanna do this for the rest of my life. I love it, but not my profession. Switched over to finance and, um, you know, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I went to work at Merrill Lynch right out of college and then to uh, TIA, uh, which is TIA Naveen now. And, uh, and then after 21 years, 22 years almost, uh, I left there and, and started my own business with Emmer Mayor's Group Consulting and, and also a managing director with a couple of investment banks. I will say though, one critical piece to my career, my background, is really my um, sense of uh, giving back. I feel like I received a lot from, especially from the University of Arkansas. Um, my wife, I, married, I met her in Fayetteville. She's from Fayetteville. My, my kids are all in Arkansas now. I have one who just graduated, and uh, she's a nurse now at Children's Hospital in Northwest Arkansas. I have a son at Harding University studying international business and going on to law school. He's a senior. And then my youngest just started uh, as a freshman yesterday at the, at the, at Fayetteville. So, um, but I've always volunteered. I've always been involved, I guess you could say, from even when I was a student. Um, and then when I graduated and got on the alumni board, then the national alumni board, um, I was invited to, to, be part of the Walton College College of Business Board of Directors, Dean's Board, board of uh, the Dean's Executive Advisory Board. 
mm -hmm. which is a, quite an honor. Uh, you know, for me, I'm humbled by that. And I was even uh, invited to speak at, at the Walton commencement a few years ago, which is, it was an amazing experience. It really was. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. Stayed involved. I was involved at the campaign steering committee. So giving back, uh, creating opportunities for others is is a, is a big part of who I am. And, you know, I, I guess I trace it back to my family and to, to my great grandmother mm -hmm. starting to, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's, um, I believe your story has the, the, uh, longest, um, immigration trajectory so far from all the people that I've interviewed. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah. From 19, 1920. That's, that's what, uh, four generations. It's, a. Uh, Three, I'm third generation, so third yeah. Third generation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... And then the kids now, four. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Um, so you say that one of the things that you do a lot is, um, you know, giving back to the community. I know that you're um, familiar with working with Hispanic market, markets and helping um, some businesses grow. So what lessons have you learned from working uh, with the Latino market and what advice will you give um, Hispanic business leaders, uh, from your experience. Yeah. So I, so I, um, um, I led the Hispanic market at TIA, which is a trillion dollar pension fund. And, um, you know, I led the Hispanic market nationally there, um, learned a lot in that process. And, um, you know, there are, there's some needs that are, that are very, um, apparent, in uh, among Hispanics, um, you know, we uh, need to save more. We uh, tend to be underinsured. Uh, the biggest, the biggest issue, financially speaking, is uh, a lack of financial literacy. Um, how, but I will say, the entire country is is somewhat lacking in financial literacy and could could improve that certainly. Um, but but so that that's one thing that I tried to emphasize when I was at TIA. In fact, um, I created a partnership with the, the Federal Reserve to create a, a curriculum specifically on financial literacy focused on the um, Southern Florida in, in the Miami area mm -hmm. and focused on colleges, uh, Hispanic students and their families and really teaching the fundamentals of, fin of finance. Um, and that could help them in daily life, professionally and, and throughout their whole career so um, that was that was very meaningful. I, you know, Hispanics tend to have a very uh, uh, well. You were talking about your, you know, your focus on entrepreneurship and, and mine as well. We tend to be very entrepreneurial, um, and so we are leading. In fact, Hispanics lead the uh, 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 the I guess you could say the the charts. You know, we we're the leaders in in building businesses. So. Um, but we also need to uh, know how to delegate because a lot of times, uh, and just looking at, at studying some trends and, and some data, um, we tend to rely solely on ourselves to be the drivers of these businesses when we could be much stronger bringing in the best team possible. And, and this goes for the, the financing of the business as well, you know, instead of uh, solely taking it on yourself, whether it be debt or, or your personal savings, you know, what are the alternatives? What are some other options that may be available to help me, to help this business and how am I going to make an impact? Yeah. You know, so it's, it, it's all, it's all very related. Um, but those are some of the things that I've, that I've, uh, you know, uh, concluded. And I, and I'll also say this, that, that Hispanics, and this is very true with me. Um, we tend to be very loyal. Mm -hmm. We tend to be very, uh, very loyal. So when a company, if a company can look at, at the Hispanic market, the fastest growing segment of the population, um, and can somehow show their, their intent to partner with the Hispanic community, <clears throat> excuse me, the Hispanic community, 
um, the community t tends to engage those those companies. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the company is rewarded with a very loyal customer base yeah. after that. So it's, uh, um, you know, is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think you answered the, both parts of it because like you were saying, you know, we, we do tend to pile a lot of things on, on our plate instead of um, trying to get help. And uh, I don't know if, if it might just be a little bit of cultural pride, but um, you know, it's, it's something that I have noticed. Um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we have that, uh, that loyalty to brands and it's just the, it's just the way that um, our culture uh, is basically. Yes. So, so what um, what spark prompted you to uh, join Latino fo focus organizations? Um, partially, the uh, I, I, I think that there I, I don't think that we have enough role models um, in society overall. We, society needs good role models, and um, you know I. I'll give you a story. I went to the uh, to Miami Dade, and this was kind of an eye opener for me, and um, really drove home the point of, of the question that you just asked me. But I went to Miami Dade College, which is in Miami. It's actually the largest college in the country with about 175,000 students. Wow! And um, I was going there to meet with the president, Eduardo Padron, a good friend and and a great leader. Um, and I got there. And he's, his office is on the second level. And so I have, you have to go up the escalators. Well, I get to the escalators and there was a big poster and it said, had my name, you know, right there. It said, welcome Mario Ramirez to, to Miami Dade. And, uh, you know, gave my title and, you know, national director, you know, and it, it was, it was very nice. Um, then I went upstairs and there's another poster, you know, there with my picture on it. You know, welcome Mario Ramirez, national director, executive planning, and and uh, you know gave give my company my title, and I walked in. I said, Eduardo, thank you so much. You know, it really means a lot. Thank you for your your warm welcome. And he said, Oh, you're you're very welcome, but it's not for you. It's for them. <laughs> and he said, It's for all the students. It's for all the students to see a, a Hispanic name, a Hispanic individual that has reached some level of, you know, of business success, uh, you know, and so professional success. And, I, and so that was, that was kind of a lesson learned. I didn't realize that I was a role model. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many of us are, and so many of us don't realize that we are. And so we can be examples to others. Yeah. And um, that's, that's uh, one of the big reasons that I, that I get involved. Uh, you know, as you asked. Yeah, that's that's such a powerful st uh, story. It it drives the point because you know that's the point and focus of these um, speaker highlights. You know, for for other leaders that are looking into um, you know growing in their careers to see that you know that's that's something that is very very needed. Yes, it is. Now, um, has, has there been anyone who is an influence for you to grow per, uh, professionally? And, you know, um, if you have any advice for Latinos to find mentors? Yeah, the, um, you know, when, when I saw this question, I thought of a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I've had some mentors through, throughout the years. Um, I've had some there at the University of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, David Gerhardt, former chancellor, is uh, certainly a mentor. And uh, I have, uh, I've had others, even when I first started my first few days of Merrill Lynch, uh, one of the senior Merrill Lynch brokers who was, so to speak, doing it the right way. You know, they were, they were building their business in a, in a very sustainable way. He brought me in under his wing and he said, I want to help you. And, and uh and he and he certainly did uh tim walker um throughout my life i have you know all of us meet a lot of people and they're 
there, there are things you can learn from each. Whether you have a formal mentor relationship or you don't, you build a relationship or rapport with a certain individual. And there, there are many aspects of that individual that you want to emulate, yeah. that you can learn from. And the more interaction you have with those people that, that you know, you admire, you're going to learn from them. Um, there's certain qualities that I've learned with, uh, from, from many people that I deal with, many families. I work with a lot of family offices now. Well, not a lot. I work with a few um, very uh, influential families around the country and um, around the world, I guess. And so, and I've learned a lot from them. Um, the uh, people have asked me, what is the, the uh, what are the, what are the, what's the best quality of a, what are the qualities of a leader? Mm -hmm. And I would put at the top, and I always do, uh, humility. And it could be because I know a lot of, of leaders, professionally um, and uh, political, political leaders, world leaders, and the best ones are the most humble. They know how to lead, but they're also not so, I don't know, arrogance is a negative word, but that they're open enough to, to hear others' opinions, others' thoughts, learn and conclude what is the best option and move forward with that. So there are things you can learn all the time. As far as your second part of the question, what, what can Hispanics do to get a good ment mentor? Mm -hmm. I would say to ask, <laughs> you know, ask, ask those that you do um, admire, that you see maybe taking some good steps professionally, per personally. And I think, I think uh, the best mentors really are, are examples in both aspects, in the personal life, in their professional life. When I gave the, the commencement address at the Walton College, you know, I said, I said uh, define your own success. That may not be monetary success. Right. It may be you, you want to do this professional, this, this certain profession, this career path, and it may be very nonprofit oriented. It may be, it may not be money per se, define your own success and reach for that, aspire for that. So same thing here, who really is in line with what you want to do, where you want to be professionally, have, learn how they got there, mm -hmm. ask them if they can be your mentor, ask for guidance. And, uh, and then when, when you do have that time, be very, uh, be very aware that, you know, um, be, aware, be aware of other people's time. You know, you want to make sure that you don't go over your allotted time. You know, you want to make sure you, you, uh, you give back a minute or five, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't be taking, in other words, be one to give. How can I give? How can I help this individual? They're helping me. I wonder how I can help them. So. That's that's awesome, and and I think that you you have a a, a really good path um, there. You know how to identify uh, what mentor to find. So, yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, You're welcome. So this this last couple of questions are uh, questions that we've been asking all of our members. Um, the the first one that I'm going to ask you is, how do you keep your Hispanic heritage alive? How do I what? How do you keep right. your Hispanic heritage alive? Okay, so um, uh, part of it is uh, is staying close to family, and uh, you know, family is such a big part of the Hispanic culture. In fact, a lot of decisions. I remember, you know, talking to uh, to my to TIA about this. You know, a lot of decisions financially retirement you know kind of decisions are very often made with several family members in the room right and so uh, we need to remember that culturally there's such a strong connection there um that you know you have to keep i have to keep that connection strong earlier this week i saw the other side of the family my cousins that run the business i told you about mm -hmm. and uh, you know we visited we caught up 
um, my dad and I, we, we, we're just very close. It's yeah. a close family. And so that's, that's one, that's one way that I keep the heritage alive. Um, we also, uh, you know, we learn, we, uh, stay up to date about it, but we learn, we teach our, our, uh, our kids about the culture and about the family's history. Mm -hmm. Uh, they love it. They love the history of the family and, um, they, they love to hear stories about it and we love to tell them, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's really neat. There's a, there's a park mm -hmm. downtown Dallas named after my, my, my great grandmother, wow. Maria Luna Park. So we, you know, we take them by there and, uh, you know, and honestly, in the way things are in the, in the country, you know, right now, um, there, there's certain aspects that aren't necessarily positive. And, you know, so you, you teach, you know, I've, I've taught, I've told stories, you know, to my kids about some of the struggles, you know, that are real, um, that maybe my parents endured mm -hmm. and some that I have, you know, we've all experienced some negative um, but we also teach them that there's, that those are situations that, that are oftentimes not, not the norm. That's why we, we, we talk about those, the negative things, if you will, uh, racism, if you want to call it that, um, as, uh, you know, they're, they're negative events, but we learn from them and we keep moving forward. And, uh, and you overcome, you know, that's what my, my discussions with my kids about those kind of instances are, are, these are instances, these are, these are events that occurred. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a lesson to keep moving forward and, and, uh, and prove others, uh, wrong, you know? So, right. you know, my dad, there's a picture of my dad in 1973 leading a peaceful march in downtown Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, some uh, police related, it was a bad police officer, and uh, in an instance where um, a very unfortunate uh, situation where a, uh, a child was a Mexican uh, family was was impacted and lost his life, and it was it was unjust, it was wrong, and it was a bad cop. So, but but they learn, they see the pictures, they learn about it, they they see my dad you know, leading the, uh, leading the march and then, and then leading the creation of the Hispanic Bar Association in, in Dallas and then being honored this past year with the Lifetime Achievement Award um, by the Hispanic Bar Association. And so they see that, we teach that as well. We teach about the family, we teach about the history and we always stress the education and the, the look forward. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I I love that. I, I like to uh, see some of the uh, places that you mentioned about your family. That that's that's very. Uh, it, it's cool because for Latinos, sometimes we feel like we don't we don't really have an ancestry to to look you know to look for. Um, but it's it's just uh, so cool that your family has had such a strong presence in the United States. Yes, thanks. Yeah, it really is. You know, I wish I could, I wish I knew more about my family in Mexico mm -hmm. before they came here. I don't know very much, you know, real honestly, but, but um, yeah, it's, it's a neat history, you know, uh, both sides of the family. And, uh, and there's, there's a long history here in, in Texas, in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get, let's get moving to the last question. And this okay. is just asking you, what what's next in your play do you have any any new projects or anything that you're working on right now yeah you know i have a very full plate um, um there are a lot of things going on right now from you know i have ownership in a in a beverage company that is uh that is uh entering the market from mexico oh wow so that's that's growing uh pretty quickly uh there's uh uh it's called Tehuacan, and it's a uh it's really a competitor to a, another carbonated water out there uh, named Topo Chico. And so, um, <laughs> but there, there's that, there's, there's, I have several uh, companies I'm working with right now. You know, we're, we're doing capital raises. Um, you know, I work with 
some families in Northwest Arkansas and, and looking at some, some of their objectives and how, how you know, some of the companies that we're looking at can impact the, the state, can impact the community, um, can be beneficial to others. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, right now there's, it's a lot about building businesses, helping, helping others grow. We have, I have a new client from Mexico right now. They're a, uh, they're a oil services company and uh, an energy company from, uh, from actually the, the Monterrey area. Mm -hmm. um, and they're expanding for the first time into the U.S. And so they've, they've asked me to, you know, to partner with them in that expansion. So that's, that's a big part of our, yeah. of our day right now. Wow. Um, finding ways to open doors and expand that business into the U.S. Yeah. Um, doing a lot also with, uh, with the Hispanic community, uh, continuing to, to uh, create um, uh, opportunities for other Hispanics, to uh, create opportunities for young Hispanics mm -hmm. in, uh, in leadership roles, and um, uh, you know, really seeing, seeing uh, in the case of my youngest son, seeing the, the next chapter unfold yeah. for his time at the University of Arkansas. Yeah. So a lot of exciting things going on. <laughs> well, um, my kids have stuff going on right now, as I mentioned. <laughs> you know, my daughter with a new career in nursing, my son finishing up his last year at Harding, and he's going to be going on to law school. So it's really fun to, it's a whole different stage when they get to, you know, yeah. different, different, uh, uh, go, they start going in different directions and growing up. That's, that's an interesting part of yeah. our lives right now. You just watch, you know, watch them grow, and and you know, you you're probably uh, proud because this is now what sh shows you all that you put, uh, you know, uh, on you know in them, you know, all the time that you invested in their education and and bringing them up. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's sort of a, uh, you know, you start to realize uh, some of what you've taught them, and you hope. Okay, now they're now they're getting on their own, and you know, hopefully they're they they're making good decisions, and and you know, knock on wood, everything's going really well. <laughs> so I, I understand. Yes. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mario. It's been it's been a great pleasure talking to you. And likewise, David. Thank you. Thank you, and um, you know, to to our audience, thank you so much for joining, and you have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks, David.